objective accomplished. Commander, we are picking up incoming transmissions at this location. Decoding in progress. Nexus, the synaptic technology you required has been recovered and sent for collection. Message ends. Commander, board the transport and scout the designated area for the enemy research facilities. Once identified, proceed to LZ number 2 for pickup. Do not engage the enemy at this time. Mission timer activated. Christine really seems to be all about this synaptic link. I hope it's worth it. Switch the 10 units on the landing pad to do or die, then load them onto the football. While waiting for them to do so, take the four factories and place their delivery points just off to the side of the main base, in two slightly separate groups as you see me doing here. This will prove useful at the end of the stage, trust me. Our first goal is just to get to the next LZ, but there isn't a direct route. We'll have to make a giant S shape, and the top of that S is where the main difficulty with this stage resides. To begin with, make the 10 unit away team its own command group and start heading them east. Scavenger detected. Unit under attack. This scavenger base isn't any more threatening than previous ones, despite the oil can mortar they've set up. Unit under attack. Shoot it as you pass by, but also take a single MG tank and send it in to deal with anything that was too far back for your team to hit. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Scavenger cave eradicated. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Be sure to have your team head south around these hills. The objective of the map may be to scout the base, but until you do, its factories will sit idle, and we would like the extra time to set up before they start launching counterattacks. Anyone passing north of the hills is likely to trigger that trigger. Set up a repair bay here to fix the damage you currently have, and start building two Lancer hardpoints here. These should be outside of spotting range of the enemy base, but if not, say a future version of the game changes it, build them anyway, just back up a bit. Completed.
Also, with the repair bay active, change your combat units back to retreat at medium. Construction completed. After the Lancers, set up two mortars and then the sensor tower that will kick things off. Construction completed. The enemy's main base is in the north center. It's sparse on base defenses, but it is a major bottleneck and they have a lot of units on hand even before the factories become active, so assaulting it with your starting force is unrecommended. Also, the NP have a very powerful group of tanks here. They will sit there and do nothing until you activate them, so it's advised that, until much later, you do not push towards the northwest. Construction completed. Construction completed. After the sensor, continue to have the truck build mortar pits. The indirect support will be useful. Construction completed. Enemy base detected. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. With the enemy now active, they will periodically send attack waves. I recommend skirmishing them with your own units, now that you have a repair bay backing you up. Pay specific mind to the enemy bunker busters, as we don't want our defenses getting smashed. Attack. Construction completed. 
structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Group zero, reporting. Group zero, reporting. Structure under attack. When you feel that it's time to move your units to the LZ, switch them to do or die, so that if any get hurt, they don't turn around and run right back in front of the enemy base to try and get healed. Also, since you are probably choosing to do this after you took out an attack wave and have some breathing room, give your truck the order to set up a picket line of Lancer Bunkers. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Incoming intelligence report. Structure under attack. Commander, we have decoded this incoming message to the new paradigm. You have done well. Once we have analyzed and authenticated the technology, your reward will follow. Commander, reinforcements are available. Destroy the new Paradigm base and recover any artifacts present. Assemble at LZ number 2 when you have completed the mission. This Nexus guy sure sounds friendly. We've had 30 minutes added to the timer and are now allowed to bring in reinforcements. Start with all of the trucks you have on hand that aren't doing repair duty back home, your command tank, and then fill the rest of the football with parts of your MBG. Structure under attack. 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 Unit under attack. Scavenger base detected. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit 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 under attack. 
unit under attack. Reinforcements landing. When your reinforcements land, immediately put up a new repair bay near the LZ and attach all units to the newly arrived commander, hopefully more effectively than me and my fat fingers just did. Assigned to commander. Remove the old repair bay so that any damaged units only have one way they can fall back. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. With your next football load, bring in your artillery team. Or, in my case, misclick, resulting in most of your artillery team and a random MBG unit that was laying around. Also, have your trucks start setting up Lancer defenses. Hopefully, your trucks fared better than my unmanned drones did. I'm going to need to build a couple replacements. If your picket line on the west didn't finish for, you know, any reason at all, make sure you get it back up. We want them ready for when those west side tanks become aggressive. Our strategy for this stage is going to be to push up the eastern side of the map. After clearing out the scavenger base and a few scattered guard structures, we're going to set up our mortar team in this area to shell the NP base from relative safety. Our MBG's duty this stage is to clear this area and then just, with the help of Lancer bunkers, keep the NP penned while the artillery and trucks do most of the work. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. Scavenger base eradicated. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Reinforcements landing. Group two reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Assigned to commander. Unit under attack. Under attack. Group one reporting. A sensor tower here will trigger the western group, but a four pack of lancers should stop them, Under as they don't have any bunker busters or flamers among them. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. 
Unit under attack. One reporting. Reinforcements landing. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Artifact detected. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Artifact detected. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Assigned to sensor. Group two reporting. Structure under attack. Assigned to sensor. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. While we are going to want time at the end to research and rebuild, we only need 25 minutes tops for it, so there's no need to risk rushing the bottleneck. Skirmish in front of it, but don't get close enough that the flame bunkers can light you up. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. 
Unit under attack. Construction completed. Assigned to sensor. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Artifact detected. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Unit under attack. Assigned to sensor. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. If your MBG is getting bored, have them press to the now heavy tank free west edge where four mortar half tracks can be found. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Artifact recovered. Artifact recovered. Artifact recovered. Return to LZ. With the artifacts recovered and researching away, and the last mobile unit defeated, it's time for some post-stage logistics. Assigned to Commander. Group 1 reporting. I'll give orders to demolish most of the structures and fade to a bit later when a critical research is about to finish. Return to LZ. Group 2 reporting. Major research completed. We've just finished researching the Python heavy body, which means we can now make bona fide heavy tanks. Let's head into our unit designer. Looking first at our heavy MG tank, we'll compare the medium Cobra to the heavy Python. Notice specifically that the Cobra version's speeds are 0.75 on flat ground and 0.63 on rough ground. Switching to the Python, in addition to the expected increases in cost, hit points, armor, and weight, it also increases the horsepower of the engine. This leads to an amusing situation where the heavy MG on a Python body is the same speed in rough terrain and actually a tiny bit faster over flat ground than the medium was. The same holds true for the medium cannon. The commander. And the lancer. All of their speeds remain largely unchanged despite the much more survivable frame. Granted, those speeds aren't fast, but at least they aren't getting any slower. Also, a look at our fast truck. Technically, we also just researched the bug body, the NP light design, and it is lighter than our Viper. However, every propulsion in this game has a maximum speed. For wheels, that is 1.37. Both the bug and the Viper reach that cap, so while it may be 20 power cheaper, I don't personally see a pressing reason to swap bodies.
Now, I'm going to recycle our command tank at the repair bay and rebuild it back at base factory number one with its new hotness body. Return to LZ. I'll also separate three lancers, three MGs, and two cannons from the group here and park them next to the repair bay as they'll be next up. Return to LZ. Major research completed. With the commander finished, next up is a rebuild of these eight tanks. Return to LZ. While waiting on them, let's go back into the designer a bit for our artillery. Switching the mortars to the python body, much like the other units, has had a negligible effect on speed. However, we are also going to update the weapon to the new, much bigger, heavier and slower, bombard turret. An examination of the damage change makes it appear to be sort of a side grade to the basic mortar. It hits much harder, but also much slower, for an overall DPS change of almost nothing, and it has the exact same range and HP as its predecessor. However, the main usage of our mobile artillery team isn't to fight enemy units, it's to deal with enemy fortifications which tend to be armored. I'll say more about this when we review the technology at the end of the stage. Return to LZ. Return to LZ. Return to LZ. Return to LZ. Once the eight MBG tanks are done, airlift them, and only them, into this stage, and begin rebuilding the rest of the MBG, but only from the first two factories. Also, I had no more need of the heavy truck in this stage, so I recycled it too. Return to LZ. Return to LZ. Reinforcements landing. Return to LZ. Return to LZ. When the next batch of MBG tanks are finished, do not bring them into this stage, just leave them where they are. Instead, recycle the 10-man mortar team and begin rebuilding them, but only from factories 3 and 4. Return to 
Return to LZ. Yes, Christine. Return to LZ. I know, Christine. Return to LZ. Look, I'm sorry I forgot our anniversary, all right? And now, a look at the technologies. Vehicle research completed. The NP Lightbody Bug, much weaker than the Project Viper. While lighter than the Viper, we don't really have a use for it at this time. The extra thermal armor it, and all other NP bodies, have over our designs usually isn't relevant due to 95% of what we face being non-incendiary. Weapon research completed. Structure research completed. The Mini Rocket Artillery and its structure, the Mini Rocket Battery. Technically, these count as artillery pieces, but their range doesn't really make them useful as such. They are the stepping stone to a better artillery piece later, but I mean much later. You'll notice that the base defense is a strong point, otherwise called an emplacement, rather than a bunker. This means that its damage resistance calculation is much different, and specifically much weaker, than a bunker. I don't use them much, as I prefer my behind-the-wall indirects to be mortars, and it can't stand up to being in front with the bunkers, so in my games it gets sidelined. Vehicle research completed. Composite Alloys, a passive bonus to all units HP and non-thermal armor values, and prerequisite for the Vehicle Research Completed Python Heavy Body. I already demonstrated its difference to the Cobra in-game. Weapon Research Completed and the Bombard Heavy Mortar. At this point, I'm going to describe why armor is so important. This game has two forms of damage adjustment calculations, type bonuses and armor mitigation. Type bonuses are simple percent adjustments and affect pretty much all weapons the same, regardless if they are low damage high rate of fire or high damage low rate of fire. Machine guns simply do percent based bonus damage to infantry and percent based penalties to track units. If it does 50% less damage, it takes twice as many shots to kill. Armor is different. It gives a flat reduction to incoming damage, meaning that armor plays a bigger role against low damage weaponry. If you are familiar to the ARPG genre of games, then you already know what effective hit points are, but here's the semi-commentary walkthrough and strategy guide version for everyone else. Assume you have 1500 hit points and an enemy is firing at you with a weapon that does 20 damage per shot. Now assume that you have no armor at all. The enemy will hit you for 20 damage each shot, and your 1500 HP will be depleted in 75 hits. So your effective hit points, or what I call survival, is 75. Now let's say you put on 5 points of armor. The enemy's 20 damage shots are now only hitting you for 15 damage. Your 1500 hit points will survive for 100 shots, 25 more than before. Do it again, however, and things change. We will add another 5 points of armor on top, giving us 10 total. This reduces the damage we take to 10 per shot. So while we are just adding the same amount of armor, 5 like we did last time, this time the number of shots we can survive goes up to 150. The first 5 points of armor gave us 25 more hits of survival, but the next 5 points gave us 50 more. This continues on an exponential curve, with each further armor increase adding to our survival exponentially. 
there is a limit. You can't make such a heavy body that certain types of weapons can't damage you, since the game does have a minimum where armor cannot reduce a weapon's effect to less than one-third of its base damage. But in some cases, especially involving type bonuses, you can get pretty close. However, this has a caveat that it is most effective against small damage. If an enemy is shooting at our 1500 hit point tank with a weapon that does 1000 damage, we are going to die in two shots whether we have 5, 10, or 15 armor. So what does this mean for people who prefer to leave the math homework at school? In general, it means two things. A. Medium bodies aren't that great. If you want speed, go light, and if you want survival, go as heavy as you can. The mediums are not halfway between them. They don't get the benefit of the exponential armor increases, and if you can't handle being shot at, the best way to do that is to be as far away as possible. And B, if you want to take out targets with armor, you are incentivized to use weaponry that, regardless of type bonuses, does the most damage per shot. This is why my artillery team upgraded to the bombards. Their primary task is to take out base structures and fortifications, which tend to be some degree of armored, especially the bunkers and hardpoints. Return to LZ. The reason we built the replacement units at different factories was so that they'd be spread out when we get to the next stage. Whenever a stage ends, any units produced during that stage, but left at home, will be sitting on the factory delivery points and any units that were present in the away mission itself will be sitting on the landing zone. We want our team for the start of the next mission to be these eight combat units and two trucks, so that is why I have just them here, so that I don't have to pick them out of a cluster of project bodies next stage. I'll just move everyone back to the landing zone to end the stage, and... Hey, David of Alpha, uh, what's something that rhymes with Alpha 9? Return to L. Objective accomplished.